You know, people know me as a gentleman and I never, ever swear on camera. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so here we are with Thomas and Autogefühl and the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 RS. The last hurrah for the combustion engine here for the 718 models. Before Cayman and Boxster go all electric, this one here is the Sports Pinnacle. Let's go. <laughs> How can you even top a GT4? Well, the RS has more lightweight packages. For example, here, carbon fiber reinforced plastic, CFRP for the hood, some other parts, lightweight windows. And if you have the optional Weissach package, it's also visible carbon fiber on the outside. Also very interesting how they lead the air, not only in the lower part, but also here, goes in here and then cools the brakes from the inside. So a lot of interesting aerodynamic tricks they did here, soon more to that. And here comes one of the situations where someone says something and then it can't get out of your head. So sorry for that. Look at this opening here. Doesn't look like clown's face. What do you think, AJ? No? You, you don't think so? Something Come on. like a dolphin. Like a dolphin? Guys, I mean, isn't it like... <laughs> Tell me in the comments. What, what, what do you think, right? 4 meters 46 or 176 inches is the length and wow what a profile isn't it wow did you know by the way that the length and even the wheelbase from 911 to 718 is not too different actually the main difference is here the 718 has a midship engine concept the engine sits here whereas in the 911 it would sit kind of here here in the gt4 rs the main difference to the normal gd4 is when you take a look at the front we have a gd4 here there are no openings then on the front hood at the normal gd4 and also main difference at the rear windows we usually have a, another rear window but here then with the rs you have the air intake here so in this case then the air intake for the engine is on the top part and the cooling for the engine is in the lower part whereas with the normal 718 versions even with the normal 718 gd4 both air intake and cooling for the engine is both at the lower part. 20 inch wheels, either aluminum or optional even magnesium to bring the weight even more down. Between 1.4 and 1.5 tons is the curb weight, depending on the measuring technique. You can also get the carbon ceramic brakes here. Usually it would come with yellow brake calipers, but then you can also again pick a different color for that. And talking about color, here we have a nice silver car for you, but we also have other options. For example, the Arctic gray, blue wheels that looks pretty spectacular definitely what about the striking red one or maybe go for gentian blue that was bright wheels of course yeah that would be rather my favorite what's yours and then there's this very obvious thing that rear wing gt4 rs stamping in here so really massive also the nubergring nord schleife times 23 seconds faster the gt4 rs than the normal gt4 that's massive what else? Well, you can also adjust it. Also some aerodynamic parts in the front. And this one here, the classic one, is still active. The rear lights, slim LED signature, and then in the rear, the lower part, wow, massive. Diffuser and also real exhaust. No job for the outlook for fake exhaust produced today. This can be also bought with titanium here in the Weissach package. And then it will even glow at night in a bluish note when you have really floored that one out. About flooring it out. When you compare this here, midship engine concept car, also a little bit cheaper, well, a little bit cheaper, it starts at 140,000 euros, to the even more expensive 911 GT3. They basically feature more or less the same engine, but then again, it's still nine seconds faster on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Why is that? 911 gets rear axle steering in the front, double wishbone axle, and also brings more power to the ground because of the rear engine concept, so more traction on the rear axle. However, this one here also has some big advantages we'll experience on the race track very soon. AJ has joined me today and will now tell us more about the engine because they have done some very special things with that one. 
I think the centerpiece of this GT4 RS is the intake manifold. So the entire intake process actually starts here with the intakes which have moved to where the windows were. And Thomas, if you come around here, you see there's a brand new air box. So actually what you kind of have is a quartet. You have a string quartet and you're the conductor. You have the sound of the intake, the sound. You have the resonance of the air box, which starts screaming. You have the combustion of the engine, which is your trumpets, and the exhaust as well, your brass section. And you are the conductor, and with your right foot, you can bring one part of the quartet to life and bring the other one as you go uh, off throttle, and it's downshifting. So it's a really fantastic uh, experience in terms of sound on the inside. You can also hear the sound thanks to the lighter windows. So the four liter, flat six engine is naturally aspirated, makes 500 horsepower, which is 80 horsepower more than the GT4, has 450 Newton meters as well. It can accelerate to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in 3.4 seconds. It's almost half a second faster than the GT4. And finally, the crescendo is the 9,000 RPM for this quartet of yours. Now the gearbox is only a seven speed PDK and this is an RS, so RS, of course, is the track version. There is no manual, and we had a conversation about this, and ultimately, first of all, manuals are kind of dying out, unfortunately. And even though this is the GT3 engine from the 911 GT3, it's the other way around. So you cannot use the gearbox from the 911 GT3, and you can't use the manual gearbox from the GT4 because this has more power and torque, and it wouldn't be able to handle it. That extra 1,000 RPM of uh, red line makes a lot of difference. So ultimately, we're stuck with the PDK, which I think is fine because the ratios are closer stacked. The manual always is a little bit tall, the gearing, and that's also because of emission regulations. So like Thomas said, this is the swan song. So we're gonna have to have it with the PDK. Let's take a look at the inside weather. In this case, I have to <laughs> go down so you can better see me and the vehicle. First of all, door closing sound. It's actually quite decent, although these are, of course, frameless windows and they're here. They move up, then they move up, then always when you close it. And on, on the inside, you can see here race text. That's how they call the microfiber is being used. And here with blue control stitches and here also lightweight building style. Just, you know, these uh, fabric hangers then to open the door right here. We already know it from a Boxster T, for example. Here then GD4 RS entry batch, also with carbon fiber and a race tech steering wheel. And you see there are no mode switches for the driving mode on the steering wheel because this is always in the sport plus mode. You also hear it in the background. Yeah, and therefore they don't need a separate driving mode. And for the first time here, also race text being used on the dashboard here, really very beautiful. Next to, in this case, blue race track on that bucket seat. The bucket seat is standard and you can also get these additional seat belts. They're not allowed to install them for you, so you have to install them yourself because they are not street legal. Uh, but for race track use, you could use them of course, and it's a little bit, you know, double <laughs> uh, when you have, but you know, for racetrack, it's good. Other than that, leave it out. And uh, here, this and the Weissach package also has a special stitching with the Weissach test track. That's why, you know, the name comes from that. They have a special racetrack in the small town of Weissach. And uh, that's why, you know, they also offer these special racing packages. All right, let me crouch inside <laughs> because this one here sits 30 millimeters lower also than the usual came in and yeah that's the way you get in these seats and I mean they may might look very uncomfortable and of course here with the double seat belt it's not uh, ideal of course but actually you know if you compare standard seats also um, of, of the you know, 718 these are fairly comfortable indeed and maybe even more comfortable because I mean you cannot really adjust them you can just slide forward and backward and that's it kind of but here you have you know, very good shoulder support. It also fits my height, one meter 86, six foot one, enough headroom. Um, and this kind of takes the weight of your uh, lumbar area. And also in this lower part, you really, you know, held tight for race track use. But at the same time, you know, because the seat really takes weight of, you know, the, the whole entire body, you have actually some decent, decent comfort. So that's interesting. Also manual control and for the steering wheel, also as much weight savings as possible. And yeah, once again, I just love this microfiber steering wheel. It has the best grip for racetrack. Instruments, well, there is some digital stuff, yes, but everything is focused on the 
analog RPM meter. We also have the classic analog clock there in the middle. As for the infotainment, you also have some uh, hotkeys here in the lower part. This is actually quite cool, for example, for the map. It's actually quite decent, it does the job. And you also have Apple CarPlay connection, for example, like this. And the infotainment system would be standard, but you can also de-pick it for more weight savings and then you would have just a hole there. GD4 RS is only available here with the PDK, but it has a manual style, you know, so kind of deceiving. Looks manual, but only available here with the partial dual clutch transmission. Something you can adjust, you can make the suspension stiffer right here and you can also go to PDK Sport and that changes shifting. For example, the gears are being held a little bit longer, so even better than for the racetrack. Once again, this microfiber dashboard looks beautiful and the Weissach package also comes with a special batch right here. And you might remember here <laughs> behind carbon fiber, there you have the cup holders. Maybe not the most ideal for the racetrack. Beautiful stamped here in the microfiber, that logo and then underneath you have then your USB A charger. Also in the Weissach package or also in the Club Sport package, you can get here this roll bar from titanium and here also painted then in this dark blue. That's pretty cool. On the key fob or here, you can also then <laughs> open front and rear trunk. And you know, the main purpose of this huge rear wing is not aerodynamics. It's to open the trunk, you know, without bowing down, right? <laughs> so here we go. And you still see, you can use it somehow. Um, let's put the backpack inside. Upright is not that good, but you rather lay it down than like this. Other than that, you can access water and oil right here. And this is also really special. The first time we can see something of the engine here in the Cayman um, GD4S badge in the Weissach package, you also get the carbon fiber co cover. But this is actually the, the so-called air box. So where you see the, where the air then gets from the outside into you know, to this part and then get actually in the engine. So uh, very spectacular. And also once again here, the you know, the, the roll cage. Wow, this is massive. Ah, well, there's some things for weight savings. You don't have like a real Porsche logo on there. You know, this is just, a, you know, like a more elaborated sticker. Hmm. At some points, the hell with weight savings, right? <laughs> well, but here then, oh, you feel how, how light this CFRP hood is. That's a huge difference. And yeah, then you still have a proper frunk. Don't need to have an electric vehicle to have a proper frunk. You can see also cabin trolleys or backpacks also then fit up here in an upright way. Yeah, by the way, you can also see it from the inside of the hood that it's really all made of that one material. That's why also being so light. It was 250 kilometers an hour. <laughs> what the? F so welcome here. I'm not sure if you can even hear me because this one here doesn't have a sound regulation on the inside because everything has to be regulated on the outside, but not on the inside. And since we have this special air intake. This creates so much sound, actually. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure what we are driving at this moment, but I can tell you, this is far from everything you have ever experienced. the real racetrack in Portugal used to be formerly a one track as well and this 718 here I mean it has so good traction such a balanced handling very well sitting in these race techs bucket seats and here now the you know the closest thing on the track here and a little bit breaking out wow my goodness this is probably the raciest car I've ever driven. Wow, such a great handling 
and this naturally aspirated engine has such a linear power curve here this famous long curve now I mean, with the GTS versions, we were here with Mark Webber. And now I'm definitely feeling like I'm Mark Webber myself. <laughs> so everything they did to this car made it even racier. And this is always in the Sport Plus mode. There is no selector or something. This is always in the sportiest mode that is available. And I love this naturally aspirated engine. You don't have like this turbo kick. Oh, yes. Yeah, you really have to pause your moderation because it's not possible to talk all the time. <laughs> uh, I love the naturally aspirated engine. It has such a natural output. So everything this car delivers feels, you know, just combined with your body and your soul and the racetrack. Everything flows together to be, this is the perfect driving machine. And in front of us is a 911 GD3 with basically the same engine, just 10 horsepower more because of the exhaust. might be 10 seconds faster on the Nürburgring Nordschleife than this one here because of the extra technology but here with this one I would take this one here as my track vehicle all day definitely 1 on 30 here in that corner and all the way we go to hell at this uh, racetrack, AJ and me, actually they were serving some earplugs and I thought like, ah, uh, okay, what for? <laughs> well, now we know what the earplugs were for. <laughs> Woo! We switch to the road now, so uh, do we even have number plates on this one? I don't care. If you go fast enough, <laughs> number plates don't matter. Oh man. Well, I mean, the thing is, we saw it goes well on the racetrack, but is it also <laughs> suitable for hearing something on the road? I don't even know why they, they give you a, an infotainment system with it, or at least a music system, because this is the music that you want to hear. Remember the whole uh, I mean, the quartet thing I was talking about? This is what you want to really hear. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fiat Punto. <laughs> God, you were on these like middle curves, you know? That was like losing traction. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
this shouldn't I mean, accelerate like, the way it does. It's like a, you're, you're so fast, so early. Wow. I mean, you could easily leave the out this infotainment system because no one can ever hear any music in here, you know? No way. I mean, do, do, don't you feel that this car is kind of like misplaced on the road a little bit? It is. It definitely is. Well, no. I mean, it depends. <laughs> so conclusive, such great journalism. No, here's yeah. what I mean. Um, first of all, it's the same story with the GT4. Surprise, surprise. It's not that comfortable. It's a bit jiggly. It's got no sound deadening whatsoever, which in this case is good because you want to hear all of that string quartet right behind your head. But on the other hand, it's not a huge car. It still wraps itself around you quite well. There's enough space for two people. You know, it's got cruise control. It's got sat nav. So it is something that you could live with. Maybe not the most suitable road trip car, yeah. of course. I think probably because of the noise, you know, but also when we have like some stones in the road, yeah. it's like you, you hear so much from that. It's a little you know, bit like, worrying. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah. It's like, what's happening? Definitely. It sounds like you're driving the car through a grinder. It's like, Arr. yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you know, when you, maybe not when you're like pushing it too much, but mm -hmm. just a little bit, just a little bit. Then you, you hear that thing, they're like, like... The Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah, it's like... <laughs> AJ, I am your driving teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like Darth Vader behind you. But see, now I've put PDK Sport off, and I'm just using very mild throttle. It's at 60 kilometers an hour, and it's already in sixth gear. So it's, it doesn't have to be loud and shouty. So it is something you can live with, but it's not a car necessarily designed for this. It's more a race track weapon. Yeah, maybe we can put PDK Sport off and also put that exhaust node off and then... Well, it's still, but not that but much. It's, you know, um, it's, an, it's an improvement. But in, in that way, you know, when you cruise a little bit more, have the mm -hmm. PDK, PDK Sport off, exhaust valve off, Yeah, it's more or less okay, you know? So, um, I mean, once again, these bucket seats, I think they really keep you tight but also reduce the weight on the, on the lumbar area. You're right. So, um, I mean, the 780 in general is not the most comfortable car ever. Yeah. But considering, you know, the sportiness, I think the bucket seats are actually doing a fairly good job. The seats are really good. I, I will give you that. The, the, you know, the support here towards your shoulder blades really does relieve a lot of the stress on the lower back. And it was not as uncomfortable on bumpy roads as I was expecting, you know, similar to the GT4 there as well. So. The suspension is, 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 of course, it's a compromise, but it's not something that's uh, too steep. No, of a, you know, it's, it's not, not that rough, actually. I mean, considering it's so sporty, yeah. you right, could right expect now. to be rougher, you know, like, yeah, yeah this is super smooth, actually. Also, the road is very nice. Yeah, the road was very <laughs> nice, but, you know, I didn't have any moment where it's like, oh, this is like giving me a really kick in the, in the, in the back or something. Yeah. I mean, we can put the suspension stiffer here. Yeah. Um, that does make it even stiffer, but... Yeah, this is not for the street. You yeah, want to leave it. Yeah, now you feel it. It's a little bit like. Bop, it's, bop, bop, bop. It, that's it's a little like bit when unsettled. You really want the, you know, stiffest setup for the race track or something. But yeah. But even you know, we didn't have to activate it on the on the race track actually. You know. Well, in, in the front of us, Tesla Model Three. Mm -hmm. So um, I mean, experiencing all of that and around the race track and with the sound and so on. Mm -hmm. It's the antithesis. It's, yeah. It's this is kind of like the. Yeah, it's the anti-Tesla, basically, right, <laughs> what we have here. Very, yeah, very but that's also kind of tying into what we said earlier, is this is the swan song of yeah, the 718. The hurrah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the 911 will probably be around a little bit longer as combustion engine. Also, for the 718 here, we expected that they run it parallel with the new electric Cayman and maybe also electric Boxer. We have to see about that, but maybe like more the Macan on parallel basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that brings us to the, you know, last question for the day. Mm -hmm. 911 or 780? We really had a blast here today with the GD4 RS on the racetrack. What a racy vehicle. Incredible, really. Which one would you actually pick? 780? Or oh, we brought the 911 GD3 here on picture as well. It's always a tough decision. They're not too different in wheelbase or length, actually. It's quite astonishing. Of course, this one is a little bit cheaper. To me, the 718 it is because it has this balanced handling in the middle midship engine concept. I like to catch the car whenever I want to, just feel more unified with that vehicle here, actually. Yeah, 
And of course, uh, open top. I would rather pick a Boxster, I think, but definitely 718 for me it is. What about you, AJ? Well, for me, it would be the 911 because I've had a bad experience with this midship layout on a wet Hockenheim ring racetrack with the GT4 where, well, snap oversteer. And I've had pretty good experience even on ice with a rear wheel drive GT3 RS. So I will take the GT3 any day. Well, then if you want to see more, 911 GT3 touring package, we got a video of that there. And more differences, 780, 911 with the more, let's say, streety versions. A video here for you, tune in there.